The Civil War general and President of the United States, known as Ulysses S. Grant, was born on April 27, 1822, in Point Pleasant, Ohio. His parents were Jesse Root Grant, a local merchant and tanner, and Hannah Simpson Grant. He was one of five siblings and he received a good education in several private institutions. From a young age, Grant showed a talent and love for working with horses which would continue throughout his life. At the age of 17, Grant entered the United States Military Academy at West Point in New York. He was an unremarkable student and graduated in the middle of his class in 1843. Upon graduation, Grant was granted a commission as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army. He never planned to be a career soldier and expected to resign his commission after four years of service. In 1846, Grant was sent to fight in the Mexican-American War. He served under Generals Zachary Taylor and Winfield Scott and participated in several battles, including the Battle of Monterey and the Battle of Molino del Rey. During this time, Grant began to develop his military skills and leadership abilities and received brevet promotions for his bravery and courage. After the war, he married Julia Dent, the daughter of a prominent Missouri plantation owner, and the couple would go on to have four children together. Grant remained with the U.S. Army until 1854 when he resigned to spend more time at home with his family. Over the next several years, Grant struggled financially due to a number of failed jobs, and eventually ended up working as a clerk in his father's leather goods store in Galena, Illinois. When the Civil War broke out in 1861, Grant volunteered to serve in the Union Army and was appointed Colonel of the 21st Illinois Infantry. He quickly demonstrated his military prowess, winning several key victories in the Western Theater, including the first major victories for the Union Army at Forts Henry and Donelson, in 1862. For his successes, Grant was promoted to Major General and was given command of the Army of the Tennessee. He almost suffered a major setback that summer when his forces engaged the Confederate Army at the Battle of Shiloh. After initially being surprised and pushed back by the Confederates, Grant's cool head and calmness under fire helped to organize a counterattack and ultimately win a costly victory for the Union. Grant's next major move was the Vicksburg Campaign, which began in late 1862 and lasted until July 1863. This campaign was one of the most important of the war, as it aimed to control the Mississippi River and cut off Confederate supply lines. After a long siege, Grant's forces finally captured Vicksburg on July 4, 1863, giving the Union control of the Mississippi River and effectively splitting the Confederacy in two. After the fall of Vicksburg, Grant was promoted to commander of all Union forces in the West. He then turned his attention to the Chattanooga Campaign, a series of battles fought in the fall of 1863 that were aimed at breaking the Confederate hold on the city of Chattanooga, Tennessee. In a succession of daring and aggressive maneuvers, Grant led his forces to victory, earning another major success for the Union. In early 1864, Grant was recognized by President Abraham Lincoln as the man that could lead the Union to final victory, and was promoted to Lieutenant General and given command of all Union armies, a total of around 500,000 troops. He then launched a coordinated campaign against the Confederacy which involved multiple Union armies moving simultaneously in different parts of the country. Grant joined the Army of the Potomac in the Eastern Theater, and came head-to-head -head with Robert E. Lee's Army of Northern Virginia in what was known as the Overland Campaign. In May of 1864, the two armies clashed in a series of brutal battles, including the Wilderness, Spotsylvania Court House, and Cold Harbor. The fighting was intense and costly, with both sides suffering heavy casualties. Despite the high cost, Grant continued to press his attack, determined to break through Lee's lines and capture Richmond, the Confederate capital. As the campaign wore on and the casualty lists began to grow, Grant realized that he needed to change his tactics if he was going to be successful. Instead of trying to capture Richmond directly, he decided to cut off Lee's supply lines and force him to retreat. Grant launched a series of raids and attacks on Confederate railroads, and his army moved south and laid siege to Petersburg, a crucial supply point for the Confederates. The siege of Petersburg lasted for nearly a year, as Grant's army slowly tightened its grip around the city. The Confederate army was unable to break the Union siege, and Lee was eventually forced to abandon Richmond and retreat west. Grant relentlessly pursued the Confederates and eventually succeeded in trapping Lee's army at Appomattox Courthouse. 
On April 9, 1865, Lee surrendered his army to Grant, effectively ending the Civil War. Grant's military achievements made him a national hero, and in 1868 he was elected President of the United States. He was re-elected in 1872, becoming the first president to serve two full terms since Andrew Jackson. As president, Grant faced numerous challenges, including corruption in his administration and economic recession. He made efforts to improve the lives of African Americans, who had been granted citizenship and the right to vote by the 15th Amendment to the Constitution. His administration worked to enforce the amendment, and protect the rights of African Americans in the face of widespread discrimination and violence. Grant's foreign policy achievements included the signing of the Treaty of Washington with Great Britain, which resolved several long-standing disputes between the two countries. Despite his accomplishments, Grant's presidency was marred by scandal. Several members of his administration were implicated in corruption scandals, including the Whiskey Ring, a group of government officials and private businessmen who defrauded the government out of millions of dollars in whiskey taxes. Although Grant himself was not involved in the scandal, his reputation suffered as a result. After leaving office in 1877, Grant embarked on a world tour with his wife and became the first U.S. president to circumnavigate the globe. He visited Europe, Asia, and the Middle East, meeting with several heads of state and receiving honors and accolades wherever he went. His two-year-long tour was chronicled in the book, Around the World with General Grant, which became a bestseller. In 1880, Grant's financial situation took a turn for the worse. He had invested heavily in a financial firm that went bankrupt, and he was left nearly penniless. On top of this, Grant was diagnosed with throat cancer in 1884. To provide for his family, he began writing his memoirs, which he hoped would be a bestseller. Despite his failing health, he worked tirelessly on the book, writing down all of his stories and recollections from his military life. The memoirs were completed just days before his death. Grant died of throat cancer on July 23, 1885, at the age of 63. His death was mourned throughout the country, and he was hailed as a hero and a symbol of American unity. Over 1.5 million people were in attendance for his funeral in New York. His memoirs, published posthumously, were a critical and commercial success, earning over $450,000 for his family, and cementing his reputation as one of the greatest figures in American history. From his humble beginnings as a Tanner's son, to his meteoric rise to fame as a military hero and two-term president of the United States, Grant's story is one of perseverance, courage, and determination. Despite the challenges he faced and the controversies that surrounded him, Grant remained steadfast in his commitment to the American ideals of democracy and freedom, 